Hello and welcome to chapter 22 in this series of tutorial videos on programming in C. This is a continuation of chapter 21 where we're continuing to look at using pointers. So if we go back to our videos on functions, what you should see here in a little program I've already prepared for chapter 22 is I have a function returning a type void, so not returning anything, called change nums, taking two integers, num1 and num2, as parameters, and then printing their values to the screen. And I have a main function where I declare two integers, num1 and num2, and also in the main function here on line 15, print their values to the screen. And like I said, if you go back to our previous videos on functions, everything in here should be familiar and not be causing any confusion. I'll just compile this, and you can see at the moment if I run the program, I simply print in the main function the value of num1 and the value of num2 to the screen because I'm not actually calling this change nums function yet. So let's do that. Let's call change nums here below this first print statement and we'll send in num1 and num2 as the arguments and the result should be fairly predictable here. We run the program in main we print num1 as 3, num2 as 6. We go into change nums, our function, where we know that num1 was supplied here as 6, number 2 was supplied as the second argument down here, line 17. So num1 is a value of 3, num2 is supplied with a value of 6, and it prints those to the screen. Again we have num1 is 3 and num2 is 6. And now say I want to change the value of num1 and change the value of num2. So let's say I set num1 equal to 12 and num2 equal to 24 and save this and inside change nums I'll just print the values of those two again and after calling this function I'll print them in the main function again. Now if I run this compile and run this program you'll see here that the program runs hits line 19 and prints, as we see on the right hand side here, num1, 3, num2, value of 6. Change nums is then called on this line 21 here. It should all be familiar. And we print the values 3 and 6. We then change them to the values of 12 and 24 here on line 7 and 8. And on line 10, inside the function, still print the values 12 and 24. And we come back into the main function. And now we've got them printing the values. And the values are back, seemingly. To 3 and 6. And this should be no surprise because we covered this problem or the reason as to why this happens in the videos on functions. If you remember it's creating a copy of these arguments, working with those copies locally inside this function's code block and not doing anything with the variables supplied from the main function and then coming back. And the way we got around this I think in the hangbang game was to actually set the function to return an integer. So it did something with the argument and we set the variable inside the main to whatever the function returned. And that was okay when we were only setting the value for one variable. But what happens if, say, in the main function we want to actually change the values of both of these variables at the same time inside this change nums function? Well this is where pointers actually become useful. If you remember that pointers point to the address of where a variable is. So instead of having two integers as arguments. Let's make these pointers. So I'll call it a P and make the N capital to make it a bit more readable. And a capital N here, an asterisk. And you remember from the previous video, now the two arguments here are actually pointing to addresses. So if I go down into the main function here now and say, because the arguments are now pointers, well, I'm going to set those po the pointer of argument 1 to be at the address of num1 and the pointer that's at the second argument to point to the address of where num2 is. And now what I can do is I can say that whatever's pointed, whatever address p num1 is pointing to, I can set the value at that address to 12. And in the case of p num2, I'll set the value of that address to 24. I also need to remember to change these because these don't 
exist in name anymore. Just run slightly off, but I think it's fairly self-explanatory. I'll just move this onto a new line. Okay. So now what we're doing is just to reiterate one more time and to shift this across so it's a little bit more readable. Now we've changed our function to take as arguments pointers that are pointing to an address where integers are located. And in this case, the first argument is the address where num1 is, and the second argument is the address where num2 is. And now inside this function, we're printing value stored at these addresses. We're changing the values at whatever pnum1 is pointing at, which in this case is the address of num1 to 12, and wherever pnum2 is pointing at, which in this case is the address of num2 here, to 24, printing the values again and coming back and then printing the original values of num1 and num2. So let's just save and run this program again. And now what you can see is something remarkably different. I'll scroll this to the top. So in main, as expected, we print num1 as 3 and num2 as 6. We then go into change nums, knowing that effectively this is pointing, well not effectively, it is, this here pointer here is pointing at the address of num1, and this pointer here is pointing at the address of num2. So when on this line here, or these two lines, we print the values point of whatever is being pointed at for num by p num one and what's pointed at by p num two, we get obviously the values three and six, because these are both pointing at the addresses of num one and num two, which are three and six. And then we say to set the value of whatever these are pointing at address wise to twelve, and whatever this is pointing at to twenty four. So that'll set number num1 to 12 and num2 to 24. I confirm that inside the function by printing the two values, now 12 and 24. Now because we've set the address, whatever at these addresses here, when we come back out and back into the main function down here on line 24, these values have actually changed now because the function change nums didn't make a copy of these variables and then use them for its scope and then go back to using the originals it was simply given the addresses of the locations of these two variables from the main function and then inside the function change nums it worked with those addresses instead of what was ever stored at those addresses. So when we come back out and print the values of num1 and num2 in the main function on line 25 you can see here at the end of the program they have now actually changed and the values are now 12 and 24. Okay so a short video just to demonstrate how then pointers are used to manipulate values stored at the addresses of variables using functions. In the next video we'll start taking a look into character arrays and pointers. Thanks very much for listening. Questions, comments, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.